Again, we heard Jason Kelsey speak for the better part of an hour about his time with the Eagles organization, what it has meant to be a Philadelphian, to be a Philadelphia Eagle. We also heard him say that he does not know what's next. Of course, there's been speculation that perhaps he may go, may go into sports broadcasting, uh, but he said, I don't know what's next. He talked about stepping on the field, being the most alive and free he has ever felt in his life. And again, we have been waiting for him to give some type of uh, public, perhaps, uh, comment about what he plans to do. We had heard at the end of the season that, and there you see him shaking NBC Sports Philadelphia's John Clark's hand, and we know he's getting ready for us to talk to him as well. John, given your background as somebody who grew up a Philly sports fan and who has been covering Jason Kelsey for his entire career with the Philadelphia Eagles. Describe how you would characterize this retirement speech along with your initial impressions and reactions. Well, there you see Jason with a big hug for his offensive line coach, Jeff Stoutland, and he said no one has had a bigger effect on his career here in Philly and as a football player than his offensive line coach, Jeff Stoutland. And how special are the relationships that Jason Kelsey formed with all of his coaches, his teammates, and the city of Philadelphia. I was thinking in my mind watching this press conference, I don't know if I've ever seen a retirement press conference quite like this. Has there been anybody that has embodied the city of Philadelphia like Jason Kelsey? His emotions, his work ethic, his intensity, his passion, and you see it here, with all the hugs and the relationships that he built here. And it is incredible in today's NFL, today's sports world, to play every year of your career in one city. And he said it best. He doesn't think there was a city that would be a better fit for him than Philadelphia. And you heard Jason Kelsey thank the city of Philadelphia. And he said the city made him better as a player, pushing him and the Eagles to get better. He gave the example of Zach Ertz and other players as well who were pushed by the city of Philadelphia to be better, the sense of urgency to win. And that was one of the most incredible retirement press conferences I have ever seen. You get the feelings of Jason Kelsey, how he grew as a man in this city, met his wife, and you also get a sense of Jason Kelsey and where he got everything from his parents and the relationship with his brother his brother Travis Kelsey is right over there with his family and that was an emotional retirement press conference for the city of Philadelphia as well as Jason Kelsey and we are here in the NovaCare complex and I'm looking up at Chuck Bednarik on the wall and I'm looking up on the other side Reggie White well Jason Kelsey is tied with those two Hall of Famers for the most first-team All-Pros in Eagles history. And nobody has played more consecutive games in Eagles history than Jason Kelsey. So not only was he arguably the best center in football, but he was also the most durable. Hasn't missed a game in nine years, and you could see the emotions when he officially said, I am retiring, and this is my last game. Wow. Wow. A very, very emotional and passionate press conference, and you could just feel it from the get-go. He's had a lot of emotional speeches, of course, mm -hmm. the Super Bowl speech where he was wearing his mummer's costume. But I think this beats it because it was all from the heart. As I send it back to you, I honestly don't know if there is an athlete in the city of Philadelphia, its history, that has embodied everything about this city. Jason Kelsey's got to be that guy. Well, and John, let me keep you there for a minute. I mean, to that point, he said there are players who don't embrace the city, perhaps, don't embrace the press, don't embrace the fans when the fans get on their case. And he said, you have to. You have to love this city because if you show the love for Philadelphia, you'll get it right back in spades. And, you know, I think it's interesting. He, yeah. In terms of talking about why he's retiring, it seemed, you know, right before he, he made the announcement, certainly from the beginning of this, this press conference, we knew where this was going. Um, but he said, I think one of the best things in the world is to be a father who's present. It was really when he talked about his family life and his life off the field that then he opened up and gave the announcement that he is retiring. 
Yeah, and you know, when I spoke with Travis Kelsey at the Super Bowl a couple years ago, he says, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I don't know if Jason's coming back because he's got the little girls now tugging at him at home. Well, now there's three little girls at home. And it's really, it's not the games, it's the week leading up to the games, your body getting ready, the recovery and training camp. So he could play the games, but it's everything else that goes into that. And that became a struggle. Look, he was most likely going to retire going into 2022 season, but they made it to the Super Bowl. And he said, I got to come back. And of course, he faced his brother in the Super Bowl. So this was going to probably be his last year after thinking that 2022 was going to be his last year. And he has thought maybe it could be his last year over the last couple years. But it is remarkable when you think about it. And you mentioned underdog. He was a sixth round draft pick, undersized. And he is going to be an Eagles Hall of Famer, no doubt. He could possibly be a pro football Hall of Famer. And many people say he will. And there were times in his career where he was told he's just not good enough or not good enough anymore. And he needed to learn how to use that undersized body. And Jeff Stoutland helped him with that. And he made the Pro Bowl seven times. He was an All-Pro all of these years since then. So he is an incredible underdog story in the city of Philadelphia. And it was very touching what he said about the Super Bowl and having the parade. And he was originally not going to speak at the Super Bowl parade, but he told the Eagles and he said, I have something to say. And wow, that is one of the greatest speeches in Philadelphia sports history. And, and you heard from him about how it meant so much to the families and the people here in Philadelphia, a, a woman having ashes of her loved one. And, and you heard people say that they can die happy now. So this was, this was wow an incredible retirement press conference. And I don't know if there will ever be another player like Jason Kelsey. Think about it, a center, a center. Offensive linemen really aren't shown a lot or heard from unless they make a mistake, but a center just had a press conference for about an hour. And I don't think anybody has connected with this city like Jason Kelsey. Yeah, and you know, John, it's interesting. A couple things here. I mean, it certainly helps that his wife is a Philadelphia native, grew up in Narberth, Montgomery County. Um, as Philadelphia's a small town, I have a, a friend of a, my brother's friend who grew up right down the street from her, right? I mean, it's, it's a small town, we know that. So he certainly has learned about, about Philadelphia's culture from her. But beyond that, I mean, it's interesting in that he, he talks about his love for the city. He's not from here. He's proud to be an Ohio native, but he described himself as a Philadelphian. Um, and and I think that that's a big part of why the city has responded to him in the way in the way they have. And I think also, too, to your point about the Super Bowl speech on the steps of the art museum, that's when arguably he became a fan favorite. People really gravitated toward him and felt like he was speaking for them. Um, you know, even though he's he's this great. Super Bowl winning football player, uh, you know, he, he's speaking for them. People up in the Northeast, people up out in the suburbs, people, uh, you know, in South Jersey, perhaps, people in the city. Hey, and let me ask you one more thing, John, while we still have you. As I said, he talked about how he does not know what is next. Um, what do you think is next? Well, I think... I think it has become obvious with uh, the podcast that he does with Travis, the New Heights podcast, that is arguably the biggest hit for any athletes in the sports media world. So when he was out there for Super Bowl festivities, watching his brother and leading up to it, he met with a lot of TV companies. Hopefully, and I believe one of them was NBC, but <laughs> look, there's gonna, be, there's gonna be incredible opportunities for him to be an analyst, uh, him and his brother will continue to do their podcast. So NBC, Peacock, hopefully they are in the game, and I believe they are, but he's going to have an incredible broadcasting career. And now he'll be home a lot more with his three little girls and his wife. And, John, just a final couple notes here in terms of, of what he has accomplished on the field as a Philadelphia Eagle. And you touched on this, but in terms of his, um, his legacy... What do you think Philadelphia fans and, and the organization and the NFL will, will take from all of this? Well, there's only been one other center 
in the NFL over the last 54 years that has made six first-team All-Pros, and that's Dermonte Dawson of the Steelers. So he is arguably the greatest center, one of the greatest centers in our lifetimes and in the NFL since 1970. And think about this. His final season, his 13th year in the NFL, he was a pro bowler. He was an all-pro. That's amazing. 36 years old, and he is still at the top of his game. You could argue he was the best center in the NFL. So think about when he was drafted as a sixth-round draft pick, undersized, to make that many first-team All-Pros and most likely be a pro football Hall of Famer and then bring the city of Philadelphia its first Super Bowl ever, make it back to another Super Bowl. But his legacy is cemented as one of the greatest athletes our town has ever seen. And you saw and heard from him how conflicted he was losing to his brother. And I looked over at his brother. His brother was crying the whole time. He had tears in his eyes. But you could sense the anguish of losing the Super Bowl to the Chiefs, but how proud he was that his brother won it. He's one of the best athletes our city has ever seen. NBC Sports Philadelphia's John Clark. Thanks for being with us, John.